This video brought to you by Morphin Network is sponsored by Ranger Stock Convention, which is November 13th to the 15th, 2020 in Orlando, Florida. Go to rangerstoporlando.com for more info. So, Mr. Jeffrey Dolan, how's quarantine life? Oh, actually, we're uh, we're about to really loosen up over here. It's uh, um, we're we're in a, what we call level two. We were we were at level four about four weeks ago, which was complete lockdown. Um, only able to go to the uh, the supermarket for essentials and go for a walk outside by yourself, no no intermingling. But we've been in level two now for a couple of weeks, which is pretty much just limited crowd sizes at events, a um, hundred maximum. Still can only uh, sit with. 10 people sort of thing but uh but we're about to hear from the government tomorrow our time new zealand monday uh whether we're going to go to level one which will be for pretty much just physical distancing recommended but it'll be unlimited people in venues and and we'll be able to pretty much operate all business will be able to operate uh we'll just be really uh, contact tracing and our borders will still be closed for some time you don't imagine until there's a uh, there's an, uh, what do you call it? An antidote, a, a vaccine, a vaccine. Yes. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, so, but you know, it's pretty free form here. I'm out playing golf and stuff. So we to be careful with touching stuff. But we haven't had a, a case in, um, uh, has it come up two weeks now? We haven't had any new cases and we've only got one case still uh, hanging around. Um, so so we're, we've, we've done really well. And that, and that case has been hanging around for about four or five weeks. So it's a, bit of a long strange one really they're usually clear within a couple of weeks so yeah so just over 1400 no just over 1500 cases total and only 21 deaths in total which was great uh, not great for the people who passed of course but uh but you know the country really banded together and as, as our government calls it's the uh, the team of five million got together and really really worked hard to try and eliminate the thing so yeah, yeah not so good for other countries in, in the united states of course and also you guys want mr jeffrey dolan's um, autograph prints, this is what it looks like. It may be people emailing me. So, there you go. <laughs> awesome. Yep. So, let's get the interview started. So, just go to my PayPal account and put the address. I have to say, I love that uh, picture of you in the middle. You almost look like uh, George Clooney. <laughs> <laughs> very, very kind of you. Very kind uh, of you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, 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 it used to be somebody else. Never mind. Anyway. <laughs> All right. So, let's get the interview started. So, Mr. Dolan, tell us yes. about um, well, I've been an actor in New Zealand for nearly 40 years now um, and predominantly worked on the stage for the first sort of eight to 10 years of that around, right around the country. Uh, it's a very small country in New Zealand, only 5 million people total as of March this year. And, uh, and then eventually when I moved to Auckland, started moving into more mainstream television work uh, and majority of stuff I did do now is mostly corporate entertainment work. I MC a lot of conferences and awards nights, etc. Um, golf tournaments, all this sort of stuff, uh, company dinners, uh, but still do a lot of TV, film, commercial work, voiceover work, uh, and that sort of keeps me keeps me relatively busy. Um, yeah, this this whole uh, COVID thing has sort of put a handbrake on uh, the whole corporate side of events. So yeah, the whole conventions and conferencing and gatherings just just not happening. So yeah, I've lost a lot of work this year. Uh, so, but that's. Yeah, freed me up to do things like this, which was great because I probably would have been doing some sort of conference somewhere today and not been available. So yeah, sort of swings and roundabouts of life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at least the bright side, you are safe. So that is very fortunate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the important thing. Yes. Yeah. So how did you get your start with voice acting? It, 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 it evolved out of um, with agencies, with work, uh, just agents saying, look, we're going to put you forward for a voice uh, job or voiceover. Um, and doing a bit of radio and stuff as well. Sort of people realized they had a, quite a good voice for that. And um, once we were fairly well established with our American accents, with doing the likes of uh, Xena and Hercules back in the day, um, we, we, we our, our accent was working good. And we had coaches that would train us through on that. So we were pretty precise on that. And then when Power Rangers came in, it was sort of just a natural transition into that. Um, with New Zealand, you have to be pretty flexible. You, you can't just be a specific role. You can't just be a TV actor or a voice actor or, or, or a stage actor you, because the work's not just not consistent enough. So you really have to develop the tools. And so, 
yeah, you, you, you put yourself out there and, and, and uh, you get yourself in front of people, you create the brag tape, uh, you work on it yourself, do a bit of training yourself, work out what you've always can and can't do. And then, um, yeah, hopefully just the people that know you pick you up and uh, and your voice becomes more recognised and then people call <laughs> call on you as opposed to you having to go out there and shop yourself around too much. Going to Power Rangers, what was the audition process like for Power Rangers? What was the process like for Power Rangers? The audition, audition process. Oh, the audition process. Um, luckily, um, being a small community, um, and we're all very familiar with each other. Uh, I've, I've known Jim McClarty, who was the studio director for a long time, and he would he would um, handle the auditions, uh, and he would uh, get in touch with our agents and say, "Look, this is what's coming up." Um, and so, the audition process from there was very comfortable, uh, because we didn't have to, um, I wouldn't say, deal with the LA studios with the LA producers, but. Uh, but Jim was sort of the intermediary. We, we'd do the audition and he would audition us on their behalf and then he would forward the tapes to them afterwards. And then if you got down to recalls, you might then have a producer online with you when you're doing the recall audition. Um, but, you know, it's, it's pretty... Um, yeah. um, it, it's, it's, it's not stressful at all. I don't find it all stressful. It's, 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 I enjoy it. I just enjoy the challenge of you know, creating the character, seeing what the character is going to be. You get to see the sort of the the uh, pic, the, pic, the picture of them, and maybe a few clips that have already been done. And you, you get to very quickly play around with it. They have an idea of the sort of aggression that might needs to be in there, the sort of tone to the voice, and well as well. And they'll pass that on, and then you just try to modify that as much as possible. A lot of it is afterwards re-digitized as well, and, the, and, and, and a bit more added to it. But um, but overall, the voices are pretty, uh, pr pretty much accurate to our voices, and they're just given a bit of tone or a bit of echo in behind them, or um, yeah, a, a bit of uh, yeah, whatever they decide to add to it to kind of give, give it exactly what they want. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. For Korak, was, it was Korak <laughs> and Korak and they, I mean, we got the Power <laughs> Rangers. I, I'm yeah, pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure some people are gonna ask this in the comments, so I may as well get this out of the way. Uh, would you be able to say the phrase "you fight without honor" in Korag's <laughs> voice? <laughs> Just Korag to get it out of the way. Yeah, sure. You fight without honor. <laughs> you fight without honor. What was your experiencing? Uh, what was your experience doing the voice of the actual characters of uh, Korag, Daishi, and all the other characters you've done voice work for? Uh, so, I mean, they were very different characters, of course, um, and. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Korag was really a really strenuous character to do. Um, he didn't have a huge amount of dialogue, uh, but he. Uh, but I spent probably to do to do the sessions I did. I was spending four or five hours in the studio, and um, the majority of that stuff was probably uh, four hours would be fighting uh, uh, um, um, noises, the, ooh, uh, 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 just and mimicking the, the movements that the stunty was doing on on screen. And when you do that for four or five hours, it actually really rips the heck out of your throat. Um, so you've got to be really careful about that. And so I'd finish sessions with that and I'd have a, yeah, real issues. And if they tried to get me in within another week, um, mm -hmm. that could be problematic. Uh, generally, the sessions were every two weeks and you do two or three episodes at a time within that um, within that session. So, but yeah, it, it did get to the point after about six months of Korag where I wasn't dreading the call of having to come in but it was like oh man geez, I hope they're not too close to it because yeah it was you definitely for a couple of days afterwards couldn't talk whereas uh you know you, I say go say but do you what you go I I'm, yeah. I'm not sure um it, much calmer voice much more uh, uh um, controlled and toned and, and, and had no fighting of course he was just a, he was their, their uh, guardian so uh, it, was, it was a far more enjoyable experience and I, I think I only ever spent a maximum of one hour in the studio for that that character at any one time so um, it was a much, bit more of a cruisy situation and far more enjoyable as i got to do it for two years as well which was great so now you didn't say that now do you have any fun behind the scenes moments while playing power Rangers? like bts scenes or bts moments on set you want to share like funny moments um it's, it's because essentially I've, the on, on set stuff that i've done has been fairly limited i did a, a character at the very early days um um, might have been Dino Power or something like that very early on and we filmed on a, a location in Auckland at, 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 our only, at New Zealand's only real uh, amusement park um, and the other ones have been uh, pretty much uh, the recent ones would be being the sort of the, the uh, cameo uh, courier uh, person or the cameo cleaner etc um, so 
they uh, it, was, it was actually the, the very last one that I did, which was the cleaner who came in and uh, and while the guys were locked inside the power shield uh, prison thing, and, and then they started getting zapped by their own uh, gunfire. Um, that was quite funny to just see how that was set up and how they were going to transition into it, and also, yeah, transition between the warriors themselves, between sorry, between the Power Rangers and, as themselves, and then right. into their Red Ranger or Yellow Ranger characters. How they pose it in, and the stunties coming in and taking over. It was quite, it was quite cool to see that transition. But as, as I say, essentially, yeah, I've had fairly limited on on um, set time, so I don't get to. I haven't really gotten to meet the whole lot of the Rangers. Um, mm -hmm. And the stuff I have done has been pretty much independent of them, other than one maybe being locked up in a, in a chocolate-faced cask and, and the others being uh, zapped inside a, a, a prison-walled uh, laser beam, which I was I had head, headphones on. It was a so <laughs> yeah. yeah, the double edge of uh, being a voice worker. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So the, all the voice stuff I've done has literally been me in a studio in my shorts and, and, and T-shirt, uh, and yeah. they, they're out on set six days a week slaving away yeah. so it's a very different sort of dynamic oh uh, what are your thoughts on the power rangers fandom for, for us it's a very unusual experience because we don't we don't have the show here in new zealand mm. and so there's not, there's not there's not that major following of it here um at, at, or association with it and because we're over here we don't tend to uh be involved in the convention side of things so much so we don't get to meet you guys and so it's only i only i've only seen it really online uh through uh, Daniel Romano, who has uh, been a, a friend online for a long time, and I think interviewed me uh, in very early days um, of Power Rangers, uh, and this, the, the post that he's put up and what I've seen now lately through you guys, is, it's sort of a surprise to us as to how um, uh, popular it still is, how uh, passionate the fans are about it, um, and as I say, because we're just not exposed to it, so yeah, it's, it's great fun, we love it, and we love that you love the show, but um, essentially, for us, it's, a, it, we, it's go into the studio, do the job, get out because we, we never see it, we never hear it. I've never seen an episode of Power Rangers ever. Uh, I've only ever seen clips on YouTube or uh, or stuff that might have been put up. So yeah, it's um, I'm, I'm not the target market, of course. You know, I'm a I'm a I'm a you know, old 55 year old you know, Kiwi European guy. It's I'm, I'm not who they're really pushing to come watch the show. <laughs> so, yeah, Hasbro, if you're cool. listening. Hasbro, yeah. if you're listening, well, make make a, a Power Rangers convention in uh, Auckland so that Australian and New Zealand uh, fans could uh, meet yeah. the uh, Disney actors. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and mean, we'd love to. You know, I've always talked with Daniel in the past about if I'm ever in the States, you know, that I get in touch and he'd try and line me up for the match around the convention time. So, and I'd love to do that. I'd love to be in one. I think it's great. They sound great fun. But uh, yeah, as I say, from uh, how many thousands of miles away are we? I mean, we're, I think we're six, seven thousand from uh, the, U the U.S. It's our nearest neighbours, Australia, and it's they're still three thousand kilometres away. So, yeah, it's a bit of bit of a long trek to get to any places. Definitely. At an expense as well. So, yeah, we we understand that as well. <laughs> now, going back to Power Rangers. Um, now we all know that your core, you work, you voice Korag. Now, what was the yep. experience? Well, basically, where did you find inspiration of voicing Korag? Like, what was your inspiration? And again, it was it was director's notes, um, but it was also seeing seeing the, uh, the depictions of the character, the, the drawings they had of them, and the early filmings that they had already done. Um, that got me uh, to, that, that gave me the basis of what they did. And then, the, as I say, the producers had director's notes as to how they saw it being, uh, how they saw it uh, sounding as well, and, and and sort of the attitude and energy of the of the voice. So that mm -hmm. kind of helps play in together to help you build uh, what you're going to do. Um, because as, as you've seen, I've played quite a few characters throughout the show, of various uh, um, uh, fer ferocities of, uh, of uh, nastiness. And you've, you've really got to find something different about within what the characters, you know, I, th I think it was more about the Night Wolf part of, of the Korag, and Korag the Night Wolf was the, the thing that really drove that whole darkness of the voice and the heaviness of the voice, trying to make it as wolfish as possible. Um, and, and, and have that viciousness to it that you would uh, you would have if you, know, you confronted a wolf uh, when you didn't yeah. want to. Uh, whereas other characters that I've seen out there, I, I, I auditioned for Flora Bunda, I think was one of the characters many years ago, and that, that created a very different voice because of just the whole, the look and the feel of, of the character and, and its story path as well as, you know, you have, to be, you have to be cautious about how hard you work because you need to know that you can produce that voice over and over and over again. 
Whereas too, going too deep in your throat or going too high, stressful in your throat, can very yeah. quickly tire your voice and not enable you to finish what you're doing. So if all of a sudden I'm up in here for too long, doing a voice, <laughs> kind of go, I can't control that. What's going on? That could, that could finish my voice within an hour, you know? So you've got to be very aware of that too. Yeah, I I like Korag because, you know, it's sort of like a grim fairy tale in a way because like, yeah. you know, he is the big bad wolf. But where wolves fall, lions begin to rise. So my next cool. question is, uh, in your experience of uh, in doing Power Rangers Jungle Fury, well, um, what was the inspiration and experience of doing uh, Daishi? So, again, Daishi for me was a fairly brief character and my memories of it are um, compared to Gorag and Nagose, uh, very, uh, very remote. Um, it's, it, as I say, I, I look at my ID, uh, IMDB uh, page with the credits for uh, Power Rangers and I sit there and go, really? I did all those? Because um, that you just, Daishi was uh, 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 probably only did two or three sessions for that character, maybe a couple more. Uh, so it wasn't as intense, or as, and unfortunately for me, wasn't as memorable. So, so the, how how to how I developed it with the development process would, is very similar for the characters. It is it's looking at what the the base of that character is, looking at its characterization, its its its, uh, its depiction, the the pictures you get sent, the, uh, the 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 tape you can see, and also as I say, the the, the producers' notes as to how they want it. So they have it, and Jim is very pivotal. Jim McClarty is very pivotal too, in helping you find that and helping you find a voice that he knows will be manageable as well. So. Yeah, the process is fairly similar for, for whatever character you're doing. It's just then finding the depth within it and creating something that they want as, as opposed to what you want to hear. Yes. What is your advice to any aspiring actor or voice actor? Actors? It's, if you're aspiring, it's, it's don't just rely on, on what you believe is your talent. Um, you've got to uh, get out there and uh, workshop. You've got to get out there and do uh, classes. Uh, you've got to get out there and listen to other experienced uh, actors and, and glean as much information off them as you can. Not everything you hear, if you go to, uh, if you go to various uh, workshops or, or, uh, or uh, uh, yeah, learning sessions with people, not everything's going to work for you and nothing, and it, never, it never should. But you should be able to pick and choose the bits that you go, yeah, that sounds really sensible and I think I can manage that myself. And that stuff there sounds a bit wiffly waffly not really me. I won't. I won't waste my time with it. And out of that, by picking and choosing the bits that you think work for you, talking to a, a wide variety of people, learning from a wide variety of people, you, you, you actually build up a really great um, knowledge base uh, that enables you to be versatile and be able to take on um, different things when before you might find, have found them a bit challenging. Um, so yeah, make sure you, you you learn a variety of skills. Singing. Breathing, breathing is really important, and people forget that that's something that becomes really pivotal, not just to live, but when you're doing a character, knowing where and how to breathe in the midst of things like that during fight sessions, during long speaking sessions, that breathing becomes really important to maintain and do properly. Um, I think I was talking with guys last week, and Campbell Cooley had mentioning that he had passed out during a session. Now I've never I've never done that myself, um, but you've got to the stage where you know, especially as a singer, you know you're getting to the end of your uh, capacity. And so having that knowledge and having that training experience is really important to, to be able to judge. I, I do impressions a lot and people tell me, oh wow, you should do uh, voice acting. But I tell them, look, you, you're hearing the voice part, but you're forgetting there's also the acting part. Yeah. Like if you can't yeah. act, uh, doing impressions won't be enough for you. <laughs> no, no, it's true. And, well, it's, oh, well, you can't say it's true. It's. <laughs> Imperson impersonation. I'm not very good at impersonating knowing people. Right. I, I, I find that difficult, mm -hmm. but creating voices, I find quite right. comfortable. Um, and but th there is definitely that need for you. You do need to know how to read it, the, the tone of a script and the intonation mm -hmm. of it, and where what the important point within the line or the lines are, uh, what mm -hmm. you're trying to hit, um, what words you need to stress to make the point. You know, so that. Yeah. The, the energy bounces backwards and forwards. You're not just talking and preparing off at the end like that. And I'm going to do that. You've actually got to make sure I'm here and I'm going to take you out now. And um, <laughs> yeah, getting that important information across is really strong. Right. I like the fact that you didn't mention Campbell. He, he's a really good guy, so I didn't like him. Yeah, yeah, he's a nice guy. Yeah, very good. Yeah, so he's do you have... Now. 
he assists Jim McLeodie now in the studio too. So. <laughs> nice. So do you have any upcoming projects you want to tell the fans about? The, as I say, with what, we, what we're going through at the moment, there's uh, pro- everything is on hold. Um, so right. I haven't got any projects per se. As I say, <laughs> most of my stuff nowadays tends to be corporate work uh, that the fans wouldn't really see. I haven't got any upcoming uh, TV work that you may be aware of, although the photograph uh, that, that we had up, one of the characters in there, uh, you guys may not be aware of the show, but I know it screens on uh, Netflix in the, in the US, uh, The Almighty Johnsons. And that's probably my most fun character I've, I've had in a while as, a, as an acting character. Um, so I played a, a character called Derek, um, who the basis of The Almighty Johnsons is four brothers are uh, the re, the re, well, well, the personification of the Norse gods. So after Asgard and the, and the gods fought the humans, man, the gods were driven out. Uh, the, the basis of the storyline is they vanished all around the world and a bunch of them ended up in New Zealand. And over the centuries, their power was weakened, but these brothers are possessed as, as various uh, elements of God, Bragi uh, and uh, Balder um, and uh, Hod and, um, and Odin. And then there's a variety of other uh, the Norse gods that turn up, Derek being one of them, uh, who turns out to be the personification of Thor. And he's oh, desperate to get is that him. what Thor talk is? Yeah, yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah. Right. So, so it's me, they're playing Derek as Thor. So they haven't got their full powers. Like I haven't got the full Mjolnir, the hammer, but I've got this builder's hammer that I use and I can still throw it a long way and very accurately. Uh, but they, we don't have our full godly powers and that requires, right. the, the basis of the story for this is that Odin is trying to find Flink, trying to find his, uh, his love of interest. And once they get together, the, the gods get their powers back. So that's that's the basis of the show. So yeah. So if you want, check out, have a look at that. That's that's good fun. And I, um, my character is quite insane, and I have great fun playing him like that. So wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Um. So so that finished the ten questions segment of this interview. Now we go for comments yep. and fans questions. Are you right. ready? Oh. Look, yeah, Shall I summon the fans? <laughs> so who's a doze as a tado? Actually, I have the uh, uh, phone for Korag. Oh, you do? <laughs> yeah, I do. See, we get, we, I've seen none of the stuff. None of the merchandise, none of the, uh, the bits and pieces. We've seen none of it. I think oh my the only God. thing I have seen was in Dubai a couple of years ago. I saw a big Red Ranger doll that was about two feet high. That's the only thing I've seen. So, yeah. And Don't my worry. voice is all over the place in the various cards and stuff, but I've never, never heard them. So. Don't worry. If you get, when you get to a con, you'll see all your toys. Yeah. So, if, I, if I happen oh, to find a second that. one of these, I'll be sure to get one for you. That'll be great. Thank you very much. Excellent. So Aiden McCarty says, hi, guys. What's up, Aiden? Ken Brown has a request. Can you say your Rangers more more from now? Oh, your ghost say thing. <laughs> my ghost say? <laughs> your ghost say voice. My ghost say voice? Yes. Uh, what would you like me to say in my ghost say voice? I'm trying to... It doesn't hear it's like Ranger morph now, morph, morph, morph. Rangers morph now. Power cards set. Insert power card. Oh, I didn't. I forgot to ask you this. Um, what was actually the inspiration of voicing Gose? Like, like you know, doing Gose. Um, so actually, Gose was quite interesting. Like, I initially I auditioned for it and I didn't get the part. Um, mm. they casted a, they cast an American actor to do it. And he was, was being recorded in LA, in LA, in LA. Say the language Jeffrey used English. Um, and just before Christmas, about a couple of months after I'd auditioned, I got a phone call from Jim McClarty saying, "Jeff, are you available? Um, something's happened with the character, and they now want you to do the voice part." And they'd had a falling out with the actor. Apparently, I don't know who it was. I can't remember. Um, and so I, I was a very late minute, last minute. Um, casting to come in and do I had to do the first thing I had to do was come in and do all of the uh, voice lines or words for the for the toys for the for the character uh, for the merchandising stuff so I spent two or three hours in a, in a, in a studio going red yellow blue power just doing all these individual words that they then meld together when you insert various cards um, and so yeah it was a bit of a fortuitous break to get that one and Gosse was, he was, um, because he was a guardian, he was a lot more calm. Uh, they actually sort of, one of the, I remember one of the notes was he's almost like a, um, a, a surf, a surfing uh, a god, a surfing mentor. So sort of think really West Coast uh, surfing guru. And uh, it's just that they wanted that sort of mellowness and calmness and, uh, and guidance out of him. So, yeah. And so, yeah, that was, that was good fun. And that was a, a great sequence of, um, 
of uh, work through the two, two two series because generally, as you guys are probably aware, that every season the, the characters are all turned over and new actors come in. So to have the character carry through for two shows, the two seasons was great. Yeah, for me, one of my favorite scenes with Gose was in the first episode of Mega Super Mega Force, where Azim said, "Hey, um, my my why is mine green?" And then you said, uh, "Oh, there's a simple explanation." Uh, oh wait, hold on, there, there's a, a city being attacked. Go, go on. Go yeah. Fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was some some, some fun writing sometimes. I, I really enjoyed that show because uh, there's a uh, Tensu Tensu, my little robot friend. Uh, he, he was just hilarious. So going in there and watching what he got up to and racing around and craziness. It was, a, it was quite a fun little contrast character. So, yeah, I used to enjoy watching that. And plus, you uh, basically did the 29th version season. So, kudos to that. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, oh, my cousin Seth Martinez is asking, what was, oh, he's asking, what was the inspiration of voicing Omni? I think he means. Omni. Again, as we talked about earlier, it's a, a, a lot of it's just based on what I see and heard and what the director wanted, and then what the producers have provided in character modes. So, yeah, I, I don't I don't provide the inspiration for the character. I just provide the voice uh, kind of ideas, and and uh, and then and the producers send back notes quite quickly after your first audition when you get cast. They send back notes from your audition saying we need a bit more of this, or we need it a bit darker, or a bit lighter, um, or a bit higher. You know, and so you just. You, you work with it with their notes and uh, if they want to they'll come into the studio online on the studio and work through initially in the first episode or two just to pass on some uh, ideas that they've got and so yeah that's where you the, the, the sort of the inspiration is probably not the right word as much as just the it's a cooperative uh, <laughs> um, creative process that, that i participate in with director and producers mm, i see what was your experience in filming your decom wait were you in this channel original movie he was in three if i remember correctly uh, uh, which one? Were you, no, well, uh, you were definitely in Wendy Wu Homecoming Warrior for sure. Was, yeah, you yeah, played the yeah. security guard uh, towards the yeah. beginning of the film. Oh, I don't remember what the other movies were. I haven't. I don't think I've done, done too many other than, other than Wendy Wu, but um, I, I could be wrong. Like, as I say, I'm, I've been in the business nearly forty years now, so <laughs> <laughs> credits sort of go uh, sometimes. Uh, so yeah, you, um, I'd, I'd have to check back in my IMDb and go, oh, that one. Oh, yeah, no, okay. Um, so yeah, those the Disney ones we have that I can record, so Wendy were especially, they're great fun. You, you, you got to meet some amazing people, and uh, uh, and that the, the the crews in New Zealand, they generally New Zealand crews that you're working with, and you've worked with these guys forever anyway. Um, and then the, you will get the occasional uh, American director will come in, but what right. uh, especially with Power Rangers and stuff, they tend to use. Uh, nowadays, they tend to use Kiwi directors, guys we've worked with for, for a long, long time. Uh, Simon Bennett is an actor, a, a director I've worked with for many years. F firstly, in the theatre, he was a really up-and-coming theatre director before he went into television directing uh, later in his career. Um, the same with Oliver Driver, uh, who directs us now as well. And so these guys, are, you know, Oliver and I uh, did uh, theatre sports and improv, improvisation theatre together for a long time before he moved out of acting into directing. Um, so. The, we, we we have a real a good time because you just feel comfortable when you're at work. You know the people you're working with. You know they trust you and you trust them. Uh, and so and having the Disney tag to it is, is great. You know it's it's nice to have done that. And it's quite funny when people realise. You know I get I get uh, friends my age and stuff talk to me and go. I was watching the TV the other day and my granddaughter was watching this thing with Wendy Wu and there you were. It's like ah, okay. <laughs> that's a while ago. <laughs> Uh, I was I was actually really shocked to find how many Power Ranger actors were in that movie. Uh, even like yeah. the four teachers did voice work in Power Rangers yeah. at one point or another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, as yeah. I said to you before, we're a fairly small community, and and yeah. you get known by the directors and producers uh, if you've got a good quality of work standard and also good voice qualities. And so you, we do get used quite a lot, and and, and we move between projects. That are being done here you'll see the same thing happening and you know uh, you, if you if, if you look big, deep beneath the makeup of uh, the lord of the rings franchise movies and hobbit etc you'll re there'll be a lot of the actors that you've seen in power rangers uh, will be appearing in that and some that guys or another you just might not recognize them um and the same thing will be happening with the new um lord of the rings tv series that uh, amazon prime are producing uh, over here at the moment uh, that's the same thing's going to happen there you'll, you'll recognize people through there um, and we're doing, of course, we're doing Avatar down in Wellington as well. So 
there's going to be people moving back between these projects quite regularly. Definitely. I'm actually excited for that live action uh, TV series to Lord of the Rings. So I'm a, oh, huge, right. I'm a huge fan. So. <laughs> oh, good. Okay, cool. Yeah. I've, I've um, had a couple of auditions already for, for roles, but haven't been successful yet. So. Hey, you need to hopefully get one because I actually will up yeah. to TV again. Great. Brandon J. Benfield is asking, do you have more of a do you have more of a desire to do on camera work or just voice acting? Oh, look, I'd love to do a, I'd love to do an on camera role of more consistency within it. I have a lot of fun with that. I, I, you know, I, while I enjoy doing the, the voice work, it is a bit detached, a bit um, a bit isolated. Uh, so when you get to work with the cast, etc., I, I auditioned. I think the closest I've got, I was nearly the the professor character in um, Mystic Force before. Uh, so I think Ian Harcourt played that character before I got cast as uh, as Gosso. Um, I might be thinking of a different series. Apologies if I am. But um, yeah, to, to have a, a character like that who is a guardian or whether that were a parent of the, you know, the Rangers or whatever, I think would be great fun. And, and for the consistency of work, would be great too. Um, but it just you, you feel a lot more involved when you're when you're a part of a, a company itself. You know, I've, I've, with all these voices, etc., I've done in the parts I've done. I've never really met the cast. I've never been to a rap party after the series finishes um, uh, because it's just you're, you're just the voice talent. You go in and out. And see you later. So uh, yeah, it's, you, you don't really feel a, a, a real bond with the with the members of the cast. I see. And hey, no worries. Like in the conventions, you'll see them. So you can finally yeah, get. Yeah. Them. So yeah, they'd uh, be, you know, I'm sure, they'd get a kick out of meeting someone whose voice they've heard and fought against so many times as well. Jen yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> yep. is asking which character you prefer to voice acting, voice act. So which? Uh, okay, so of all the Power Ranger roles you did, which one you enjoyed the most? So. Um, I, I, I'd have to say, uh, Gosse was great fun to do because of that mentorship, that side of things here. Um, yeah, being, being the inspiration for them. Uh, whereas Kore was, while challenging, it was, the, you know, getting to play the bad guy is, you know, every actor loves playing the bad guy. And so uh, you know, they, they, having that opportunity to do that for a sustained period, not just for a couple of episodes or, you know, a couple of studio sessions was great because you got to develop the character and you got to live it, you know. Um, and so, yeah, I'd say as, a, as, a, as an overall challenge, Korag would be my favorite character that I played. But Gose was also a great fun one to play because of its long and longevity within the role and uh, yeah, a, bit, a better involvement in the show, I suppose. No, it's great seeing you appear as so many wonderful characters uh, in the show because, you know, Korag was a great uh, general level villain. Daishi was a great main villain. If any, if anything, I, the only thing I would change about Daishi is that I would love to have more dialogue scenes between Daishi and Jared, you know, yeah. because of the whole of them sharing the same body uh, aspect yeah. of the show. And, and you, it would add a little bit to the moral dilemma. But other than that, you know, Gose was pretty fun as a as a mentor, especially yeah. because of the whole, uh, there's a simple explanation for that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah no, it's a funny thing, as I say, with most of the, the, the baddie characters you play, the dialogue for them is fairly limited um, because they're only there to create the trouble and then, you know, address the Power Rangers and then try and fight them. So they don't they don't get a huge character arc to develop um, their storylines. They're basically just in as whatever the, uh, designation they are and and create havoc. And so you, as, as an actor, you do you go. Oh, that'd be it'd be nice to have a few more interactive acting scenes with the, with the actors. Uh, but you, you 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 do realize that your principal role within it is create mayhem, fight, and uh, and then be defeated at some point, and then come back. All right, guys. Well, thank you. Hope you guys enjoyed this awesome interview. So, hope you guys you enjoyed Jeffrey. You enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As I say, it's not an opportunity I get often. So anytime I can. More than happy to have a chat and um, yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. Mr. Dolan, where can I find you in social media? Uh, so, uh, I think I'm uh, Jeff Dolan One on uh, on Twitter. Um, I kind of use Facebook for more family and friends things, so I sort of avoid that for for, for social media going forward. And Instagram again, I'm, I'm in there as uh, Big Kane, B I G C A N E, Big Kane. So, and I've got a channel on YouTube as well, which has got my all my. Uh, during one of the things I did during the COVID uh, lockdown was I created a series of these. Uh, they were they called TED talks, but I slashed that out and called them Derek Thor Thor talks. Thor talks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, I love uh, the esports one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, so I just did a whole lot of different topics, did about 30 or 40 of them with different topics. Mm-hmm. And it was just a way of me staying sane during lockdown and being able to be creative. And I posted all those on YouTube. So if you look under Jeffrey Dole on YouTube, I think, or even if you went to Kiwi King is one thing I call, call myself, because with my singing, I do a lot of Elvis as well, you see. And uh, so the Kiwi, Kiwi King in Las Vegas, if you, if you find that, you'll find my channel as well. And you, you'll be able to hear me sing as well. So. Awesome. Wonderful. And Mike, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Boken Kabuto. And yes, <laughs> I, I understand how you feel about esports. Uh, and yeah. <laughs> and you can find me on Instagram at chrono underscore justice underscore cosplay. Awesome. Right. You can find me on Instagram. And as I say, at- if they want a photograph, if they want a signature, personalized signature, if they just uh, go to PayPal and put in my uh, jet.d at clear.net.nz. Uh, address they'll find me and they can order a, they put their details and stuff in and order the photograph yeah definitely so guys um if you want if you guys want the link to his paypal like to uh send him the uh, money for an autograph it's on his announcement banner you can actually look for that in our instagram page all on facebook page and for you guys to ask him what it looked like this is what it looked like this print so cool. yep. awesome. um you can find me instagram dancer boy two for seven follow us on youtube facebook instagram and twitter and again guys Thank you. Good night. Again, stay safe out there. And uh, before we end this interview, Mike, if you can. T- today's interview is brought to you by Ranger Stop Orlando, Florida. Uh, please, please be sure to check it out November 13th to the 15th. And be sure to visit rangerstoporlando.com for more inter- uh, for more information. Awesome. Hey, guys. Again, thank you for going. Thank you, guys. Have a good night and good morning or wherever you guys are. So, have a good yeah. night, Bye, guys. Bye. See you later. Thank you very much.